Hi! In this video, we will discuss emergency lighting applications using Lutron's Vive system. My name is Matt Inouye, and I'm the Lutron System Sales Engineer serving Southern California. And I'm Derek King, Commercial Sales Manager for Western Lighting and Energy Controls, also based here in Southern California. Building and life safety codes require that, in the case of emergency or power loss, control systems can override and lock out lighting to illuminate egress pathways and signage. The National Fire Protection Association has several relevant codes, including number 70, 101, and 110, describing the building requirements for the United States. Similar requirements are found in the International Building Code. Underwriter Laboratories, standard number 924, describe specific device requirements, and UL 924 listing or evaluation may be required by some project specifications. There are three methods to meet emergency lighting requirements when using Lutron's Vive system. Battery backup, emergency bypass relays, or using the emergency detector with the Vive hub. Battery backup fixtures, including bug eyes, are the only option if emergency power is not available. Since battery backup fixtures are often independent of the Vive system, we will not be addressing those in this video. The bypass relay method to override and lock out emergency lighting is common to all lighting control systems because it bypasses the control system entirely, ensuring that all emergency power feed is connected to the lighting loads and that any dimming controls are disabled. Let's look at a wiring diagram and see how the lighting is controlled in both the case of normal and when normal power is lost. Under normal operation, the lighting system controls the power and dimming while the relay sits idle. When normal power is lost, the emergency bypass relay reacts by closing a line voltage relay, disconnecting the dimming signal or both. This forces the lights to a full bright level, overriding the control system entirely. Choosing the bypass relay device and its wiring depend on the control type of the lights. The second, more centralized option for emergency lighting with Vive uses the LUT ELI and Vive Hub combination. The LUT ELI monitors up to three normal phases to determine if emergency lighting should be overridden and locked out. Under normal operation, the LUT ELI sees the presence of normal power and the lighting controls perform per the sequence of operations. When a loss of normal power is detected, the LUT ELI responds by opening the emergency contact closure that is wired to the Vive hub. The hub then sends a wireless signal to all relevant lighting controls, like the PAL pack shown here, turning them on to the specified emergency level, usually full bright or 100%, and it also locks out wall and sensor controls. Red PAL packs and integral fixture controllers must be used to control emergency lighting loads when using the LUT ELI. Each method has advantages and disadvantages that depend on the size, specification, and whether or not a hub is already required. Small systems often benefit from the use of bypass relays, while larger systems can save time and money using the LUT ELI and hub combination. For installers, using the LUT ELI and hub combination can reduce the install and equipment cost for tens of hundreds of shunt devices or additional battery-powered fixtures. For owners and facilities teams, using the hub and LUT ELI simplifies the required testing of emergency lighting and eliminates costly maintenance of shunt devices or battery-powered fixtures. Thanks for joining us today to talk about meeting emergency lighting requirements using Lutron's Vive lighting controls. For references, including wiring diagrams, cut sheets, and application notes, check out the links included in the show notes. For comprehensive wiring diagrams and layouts for emergency lighting with Lutron systems, check out two application notes, number 628 for Vive and number 106 for our wired systems.